We are in the middle of a lockdown, confined indoors. We have had to look at walls and enclosed spaces of our homes, come into intimate contact with things lying about. I have been forced to look at objects that need an extra hand. Chipped at corners, wearing, fading. They have needed me to intervene somehow. The idea is borrowed, but the materials and processes, my own. Improvised with whatever is available at home right now. Left with little else to do with my time and my hyperactivity, still unencumbered by a mere diktat to stay enclosed. I decide to take things in my hand. Kintsugi, an idea that celebrates brokenness. A philosophy that tells us that when things break, chip, and wear, it is not necessarily time to discard them. This is the Japanese way. The art of repair evolved accidentally. The 15th century shogun, Ashikaga Yoshimasa, broke his favorite tea bowl, which was promptly sent to China for repairs. And when the bowl returned, tapered together, with unsightly metal pins. Local craftsmen decided to fill the cracker with golden lacquer, making the bowl more unique and valuable. This repair elevated the fallen bowl back to its place. What we are repairing today are lacquerware pieces I have picked up on travels and have received as gifts from dear friends. To be able to fill in the chipped corners, we need to sand the layer of lacquer close to the basket work substrate that is exposed. The materials I'm using are rather unconventional. These are not what are traditionally used to restore lacquerware. What I have access to right now is powdered paper and wood pulp that I make myself as a wood filler for my wood restoration projects. A few drops of waterproof white glue needs to be added to the powdered pulp as a binding agent. Uh, we will add a few drops of water and whisk the materials well to make a fine putty that will help fill the chipped areas of the lacquerware. The larger chunks of lacquer that have chipped off the pieces as we sanded them can be pieced back with the help of waterproof glue. Thin even layers of the pulp filler need to be applied to the previously well sanded damaged areas. I am most comfortable using my fingers although a palette knife or a spatula helps too.
Once applied, each layer of putty requires a good 8 to 12 hours to dry and set properly. It is a bright new day. I have resumed filming after a good 16 hours. The filler paste applied yesterday has cured and hardened well. It now needs to be sanded so we achieve a smooth texture free finish at level with the lacquer layer. Once the filler base is ready, brushing it with a few layers of diluted waterproof glue will make it stronger. In case the layer of filler is uneven, an additional layer of filler will have to be applied. Each layer will have to be given the requisite 8 to 12 hours to cure, after which we can start covering it in paint. I'm using acrylic paints to cover the layer of pulp filler to match with the rest of the box. A few layers of black paint effectively conceals the parts that were chipped and cracked and damaged not so long ago. A few extra coats here and a few extra touches there help cover superficial bruises and scratches on the piece all over. The piece by now is almost as good as it was when it had first come to me. That is not to say that today's job is done however.
here they are the cracks that are no longer eyesores in fact they are now a highlight Does this art of repair, this art of scars, have implications for us as people also? We are all imperfect, cracked and broken in places. How do we choose to confront that which is unraveling and undone within? Things go wrong, that is life, but we can, with thought, resourcefulness and resilience, find ways to patch and mend, to survive and go on, make the best of what we have, and exactly from where the cracks are the deepest, we have this opportunity to shine the brightest. The few pieces of lacquerware that I had set out to repair are done. And with a little nudge from the Zen Buddhist approach to ceramics, these pieces will hopefully continue to attract respect and attention for a very long time to come. The process itself that stands for reconciliation with flaws and accidents of time will hopefully transcend the objects and continue to reinforce its important human values to those around.